There are many advantages to using in-context features. Because you're designing the assembly environment, you can be sure your components will fit properly. You can also reference geometry from other assembly components to capture design intent. This can make your components more robust by automatically adjusting to changes made to your assembly. All of this is possible through the use of in-context features. In this lesson, we'll focus on the side effect of in-context features, the resulting links between parts and assemblies called external references. External references make possible the many advantages of top-down design. However, there can also be some undesirable effects. Suppose you want to reuse a component that's designed in the context of an assembly. If you decide to add it to other assemblies, you run the risk of creating problems should you ever make changes to the original design. Scenarios like this often lead users to remove external references. Let's take a look at some of the ways this can be accomplished. Here, I have an assembly made up of two components. You can see by the arrow symbol in the Feature Manager tree that the top cover component has at least one external reference. If I expand this component's features, you can see that, in fact, there are two features with external references. If you right-click on the name of the component in the Feature tree and select List External References, a window will appear showing you information about the in-context features. You'll see which assembly these references were created in, as well as details about each individual reference. There are a couple of buttons here at the bottom that allow you to quickly eliminate all of the references in this part. You have the option of breaking all external references permanently by using the Break All button, or you can temporarily suspend these references by using the Lock All button. If you decide to use Lock All, you can later unlock all to re-establish all references. By using these options, you're telling SolidWorks to freeze this part as it is right now and not update the part even if the rest of the design changes. For instance, Take a look at the first extrusion. If I right-click on it and select Edit Feature, you can see the end condition of the extrude is up to vertex. This is an effective way to design this cover just in case the depth of this cutout was to change in the future. In fact, let me make a change to the cutout. I'll go back to Edit Assembly Mode, and instead I'll edit the Cut Extrude feature called Cover Cutout. I'll change the depth of the cut and click OK. When I rebuild the assembly, you can see the cover updates and again fits perfectly in the cutout. Now this is the behavior I would expect. Next, I'm going to right-click the cover component in the feature tree and select List External References. I'll select Lock All. SOLIDWORKS warns me that by locking these references, I won't be able to add any additional external references. I'll click OK and OK again to close this window. Now that the references have been locked, I'll edit the cover cutout again. This time, I'll make the depth of the cut smaller and click OK. Now this time, when I click Rebuild, the position of the top cover will update, but the depth of the extrusion will not. This is the result of locking the external references. Notice the Feature Manager tree displays an asterisk next to the arrow symbol. Had I selected the Break All option instead of Lock All, SOLIDWORKS would display an X instead of an asterisk. To complete this exercise, let me go back and unlock the references of Top Cover. As soon as I click Unlock All, the extrusion will update once again.